All right, people, let's do this thing. I'm gonna tell you how to do a simple neural network with PyTorch. This is addendum to the CSEP 546 graduate level machine learning course. Uh, the videos for that course are all online, all free. I'll put a link below so you can follow along. Let's get started. Here's the support code that I provided. Uh, you can download this from the web. I'll provide a link. Start off doing the same standard stuff of loading the raw data, getting your train test validate. Got to install a few packages to do this. First is Pillow, the second is PyTorch. I have a video that I'll link below that walks you through how to do that with Visual Studio if you need a little help. And now we get into the PyTorch stuff. So in PyTorch, you need to take the raw image data and load it into what's called a tensor. And so you create a transform object to transform from your image data into the format that you need. PyTorch supports this method of composing transformations. So in this case, we've composed the transformation to a tensor along with normalization. And so each image as it's loaded will be transformed so its mean is zero and its standard deviation is 0.5. That's a per image normalization, not a per data set normalization. You might want to think about what are the pros and cons of those two different techniques. But for this assignment, you might want to just use the per image thing because it's easier. So once you've created this transformation that you want to do, you load all the images and apply it to them. That's what this does right here, your training set, your testing set, and the actual labels all get loaded into tensors and then stacked together into essentially an array of all of your training and testing data. Now, in this case, we have a relatively small training set and I think you're gonna be training relatively small models. So you're able to load all the data in one go like this probably. If you have an older GP with less RAM, you may bump into problems with this and you'd need to look into PyTorch's support for uh, data sets so you can batch the data one chunk at a time onto your GPU or into your RAM on your CPU. The next step is to define the neural network structure that you want. And so to do that, you create a class. Let's swip over here. And we create a class called Simple Blink Neural Network, which inherits from torch.nn.module, which is a class that PyTorch provides. Um, you have to provide two things in your implementation. The first is initialization, which defines the layers that you're gonna have in your neural network. And the next step is to tell PyTorch how to do a forward pass and connect those layers, how you want your data to flow through the layers that you've created. Let's go through those in turn. Our neural network here has three layers. So we create self.average pooling, self.fully connected one, and self.output layer. The average pooling layer uses a torch predefined layer called average pooling 2D with a kernel size of two and a stride of two. So what that essentially does is it takes the 24 by 24 image input and scales it down by averaging blocks of four pixels into single pixels in the output. The next layer is called self fully connected one. It uses the torch.nn.sequential to stack multiple primitive layers into a single layer. In this case, it stacks the, um, a linear layer, which is a fully connected layer along with a sigmoid activation into a single layer, which is very similar to what we've been doing in our assignments. In our assignments, we kind of thought of those conceptually as the same thing, but in Torch, those are broken out. So you can choose to specify an activation or choose not to specify an activation. Torch.nn linear is how you specify a fully connected layer. The parameters are the number of inputs, in this case, 12 by 12, because remember we had a 24 by 24 input, which we ran through the average pooling layer to scale it down, and then you have 144 pixels in the scale down image, and those are the inputs here. Then hidden node is a parameter, which we passed into the initialization function. If you use the default parameter, it'd be five, so you'd have 144 inputs going to five hidden nodes, and then all of those would be passed through a sigmoid activation. The final layer is the output layer. It's also a stack, a sequential stack of a fully connected layer, in this case going from however many hidden nodes you have, five, down to one output, a single neuron at this layer, which will be the output of the entire network, again passed through the sigmoid function. And that's the definition of the layers that we're gonna use for this network. Now we're gonna tell PyTorch how we wanna stitch them together. Very straightforward in our case. We take in, for the forward pass, you take in X, which is the example that you want to apply the network to, or it could also be a stack of examples, and this can run in parallel. 
First thing you do is apply the average pooling layer to X, and we have this idiom of, you know, take the input, get the output, take the output of there and pass that into the next layer, get a new output, so it's kind of transforming as it goes. So the first step is to call the average pooling layer on the data that you have input and get the output. This output's gonna be a two-dimensional output, 12 by 12, so you need to convert it into a one-dimensional output so you can pass it into the fully connected layer and out.reshape is the function that you use to do that. Then you'll have a one by 144 element array and so you can pass that to fully connected one. That's the size of the input you told it to expect when you defined it up above. Pass that in there and then the output that comes out of that is gonna be a one by five array because that's how many hidden nodes we had if we use the default parameters. So you can now pass that to the output layer, which is expecting five values on its input, and it'll return out, which will just have a single value passed through that activation, and you can return that, and that's how you do the forward pass on the network. The cool thing about PyTorch is that now that we've defined it in terms of primitives that PyTorch understands, it automatically knows how to do the back propagation for you, so you don't have to specify anything about that. That's really, really great. So that's the definition of our network. We need to instantiate an instance of that. Then we also create our loss function and we tell PyTorch what optimizer we wanna use. In this case, our loss function is MSE mean squared error. You can look up the torch.nn.loss functions online and find a whole bunch of options that you could use. You might look into using BCE, binary cross entropy. Um, in the case here, I have the reduction equals sum, which just lets it know that when I ask it to print out the loss to show me the loss summed across all the elements of the training set, not on a per instance basis, but you can drop that if you'd rather see a per instance loss. The optimizer we're using in this case is SGD or stochastic gradient descent. Its first parameter is all the parameters of the model that you want it to optimize. So all the weights across the entire model, you tell this where to find them, and then from there you're done. It like I said before, it knows how to backprop, it knows how to calculate the loss of everything, it knows how to move the errors, and it knows how to find the gradients to take a step. So it's very, very, very nice. The optimizer also takes its own parameters, learning rate, momentum, whatever it takes. You can look at the documentation to find more options if you want to include those in your parameter sweeps. This next block is really only needed if you are using a GPU. So you need to initialize the GPU if it's available, and that is available will return true if you've installed CUDA and you've installed a version of PyTorch that's CUDA enabled. Otherwise, it'll return CPU. And then all of this code just copies your data onto whichever device you want, onto your GPU, or I guess in the case of CPU, it's sort of like a no-op where the data will just stay where it was. And then you do the training loop. So it's pretty simple, pretty small loop here. Um, I've chosen to do 500 iterations you would probably want to use a holdout set and keep optimizing until the loss on the holdout set stops going down or some kind of a patience thing where you look a little bit beyond that point before stopping. And so here are the steps of doing your optimization. Just like we discussed in the algorithm, you do the forward pass by passing the training data through the model and getting its predictions. Then you calculate the loss using the loss object that you defined above. Print it out so you know if you're making progress. Then you have to tell the optimizer to reset its gradients to zero because otherwise they'll just build up for each iteration. So every iteration you have to clear it out. Um, and then just this one method, loss backward, that does everything to backprop the loss to all the parameters to know exactly how much you're gonna need to update them to find all the right gradients and everything. And then you're able to call optimizer step and take a step according to the learning rate in the direction that you're supposed to go. There you go, do it 500 times, you're gonna have something that's optimized. Then the only thing left to do is run the model on the test set and see how good it is. Um, so just execute the model on the test set, use a threshold, in this case I chose 0.5, and print out the accuracy. Remember, use error bounds. So there you go, PyTorch does a lot for you. So go online, look at the documentation, drop in some of the other layers that we've talked about in class to try to get the best accuracy you can. Good luck on this assignment, I'll see you later. Peace.